Yeah. 
Good morning and Happy New Year. I hope you're all doing well wherever you are. Um, welcome to this service from the Grange Methodist Mance for the South Lake Circuit and wherever you are and uh, as we begin this new year together. Let's begin with a short prayer. God, in this new beginning we come together again. We bring our wounds and our weariness from all that is past and our hopes for all that lies ahead. And we seek your presence with us again as we travel into this new year. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, begin with a, a, a fishy song, a Toast Church song that we, uh, we know well. 
We wish you well this day. And as Toast Church regulars will know, it begins gently. Um, so if you're feeling a bit sleepy or um, not very energetic, then uh, perhaps that feels good. But it does pick up the pace. Um, we've, it's got some actions as well. It's got some actions as well. Um, and in the second half, when the pace picks up, um, well, in Toast Church, we'd all sort of swing one another around and have a bit of a dance. Uh, but that's been vetoed in here. I'm not sure why. Well, <laughs> we're, a bit, we're a bit short of space. <laughs> but if you want to do that at home... Just I'd be, have done it. <laughs> If you want to do that at home, be ready because it's quite short. It's gone before you know it. Um, you want to demonstrate the actions? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's we wish you. I'll, I'll take, take the words. Take the words for moment. We wish you well. This ah, I've forgotten that. <laughs> we wish we, we wish you well this day. We wish you well this day. In all the good times, in all the bad times. We wish you well this day. And then it repeats exactly the same thing. So this day, it's year. We wish you well this year. Okay. Are we ready? Yep. Ready as we'll ever be. Mm. We wish you well this day. Clipping, ah, right. So here we are, I hope that woke you up a bit. On the, uh, it's the first Sunday of 2021, but it's actually the second Sunday of Christmas because Christmas isn't just one day and Christmas overlaps from the end of one year into the beginning of the next. Um, and so the ending of the Christmas story that we've been working towards for weeks is really just the beginning of what comes next. Perhaps really in just the same way as birth is the ending of pregnancy but the beginning of life. On Wednesday this week it will be the 6th of January which is Epiphany which is traditionally is the end of the 12 days of Christmas and traditionally when we remember the story of the Magi traveling to see Jesus. And so that's what we're going to think about this morning in our service. The Magi were the most unlikely visitors to come and see the newborn Jesus. Sometimes we call them the three kings, although the Bible doesn't say that there were three, it only names three gifts. It doesn't actually say that they were kings, but they must have been wealthy and privileged to have been able to make that journey to visit Jesus. And in this little backwater of Bethlehem, they probably seemed like royalty. Sometimes we call them the wise men. It doesn't actually say that they were all men in a group. It would have been a masculine noun um, for a group that was mixed. Though I guess probably they were all men. Who knows though? Um, and magi means great ones or powerful ones, mighty ones. And they would be educated wise men, perhaps, but their learning was in astrology and enchanting and strange foreign things. The word magi is related to the same place that we get our word magic. Uh, they were probably from Babylon or Persia or Arabia, but we're not actually told. It just says they were from the east. 
and it's left mysterious. But perhaps that's because it's far more important in the story that Jesus is the true king and real wisdom comes from God. We'll hear that story in a moment, but first we're going to pray. Wise God, you are the one who existed before all time. And yet you come among us as a newborn baby. Wise God, you are the true king. And yet you were born the child of a peasant couple. Wise God, you are the eternal word. And yet you gave up all language in exchange for the wordless cry of an infant. Wise God, you created stars and planets and gave life to all that lives. And yet you made yourself fully dependent on a mother's body. Wise God, you surprise us. You invite rough shepherds and foreign sorcerers to kneel in worship. And in our surprise, we find ourselves invited to. We come knowing our weakness, our pride, our failure to seek you, or even sometimes to hear your call. And yet you do call, we are invited. Help us to kneel and worship you too. Amen. Amen. And so we hear that story from Matthew's Gospel and Paul's going to read for us. Where do you find wisdom in this story? So this is Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so, everyone, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, For this is what the prophet wrote, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the, from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions, Go and make a careful search for the child, and when you find him, let me know, so that I may too go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were! What joy was theirs! It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Perhaps one of the most surprising things about the Magi worshipping Jesus is that they were not Jews. The king of the Jews was not their king. He was not foretold in their prophecies. But the fact that they found his coming foretold in the stars and the planets that they studied, the things of the universe, starts to reveal that this baby king is far more than the ruler of a single nation. God's plan was always far bigger than that. 
And so Martha's going to read for us um, something that was written a generation after Jesus in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you, the Gentiles, pray to God. Surely you have heard that God in his grace has given me this work to do for your good. God revealed his secret plan and made it known to me. I have briefly written about this, and if you will read what I have written, you can learn about my understanding of the secret of Christ. In past times, human beings would not told this secret, but God has revealed it now by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. The secret is that by means of the gospel, the Gentiles have a part with the Jews in God's blessings. They are members of the same body and share in the promise that God made through Christ Jesus. I was made a servant of the gospel by God's special gift, which he gave me through the working of his power. I am less than the least of all God's people, yet God gave me this privilege of taking to the, ge taking to the Gentiles the good news about the infinite riches of Christ, and, and of making all people see how God's secret plan is to be put into effect. God, who is the creator of all things, kept his secret hidden through all the past ages in order that at the present time, by means of the church, the angelic rulers and powers in the heavenly world might learn of, this, of his wisdom in all its different forms. God did this according to his eternal purpose, which he achieved through Christ Jesus our Lord. In union with Christ and through our faith in him, we have the boldness to go out into God's presence with all confidence. We have the boldness to come before God with all confidence. We're going to sing our next hymn, which is number 34, if you're using Sing in the Faith. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
A friend of mine shared on Facebook in the last few days some things that her grandson has written in his thank you letters this year. Um, in reverse order, she thought the top three were, number three, thank you for this book, I haven't read it. <laughs> number two, did you know that Lego is my favourite thing? Only that was written to someone who didn't give him Lego. And tumble, number one, thank you. This was my 15th best present. <laughs> I think he was grateful for the gifts he was given, but maybe he didn't quite choose the best words to say thank you. Some cultures give Christmas gifts not on Christmas Day, but at Epiphany, because this was when the Magi gave the gold and frankincense and myrrh to Jesus. And I just find myself wondering what sort of thank yous Mary and Joseph might have written on Jesus' behalf for those gifts. Um, but I'll leave you to wonder about that. Hearing the story as it's told to us, actually the emphasis isn't really on the gifts that they bring. The gifts are a response out of the joy that the Magi feel at finding Jesus at last, at finding the one that they have been seeking. As with all the Christmas story, because it's so familiar, it's easy to hear what we expect to hear. Um, we hear that the Magi have seen this star in the east and they followed it all the way to Israel, where somehow they take their eyes off it for a moment because they think they know better and they go to Jerusalem instead of Bethlehem. And then they get in this pickle talking to jealous old Herod. But then they come out and they see the way the star was really trying to take them and they follow it to Bethlehem. But actually, if you read the story carefully, it doesn't say anything about them following the star to Jerusalem. They say that they saw his star when it rose, or in the east. Those two things really mean the same thing, because the word for east and the word for rising are the same word, because it's where things rise, the sun rises in the east. So they saw his star when it rose. And then somehow from their studies, they know that this meant a king of the Jews, and so they travel to the capital city to find him. And there the scribes tell them that the prophecies say Bethlehem is the place where the Messiah will be born, not Jerusalem. And when the Magi are on the way to Bethlehem, it says they look and they see again the star, the same star that they had seen in the east. And so they are full of rejoicing because here is the confirmation that they are in the right place. Their journey is justified. They hadn't misread things because here it is. And the Greek describing that joy is completely over the top. If you actually literally try to translate every word that was there, it says something like they rejoiced greatly with intense joy. Um, it just can't get over itself. Two words that mean kind of great and two words that mean joy um, all bundled together. And sure enough, so they find the child they've been looking for and they worship him and they present their gifts to him. And then, warned by God, they return to their own country by another road. I don't know about you, but I get the sense hearing this story that this really was a life-changing experience for these Magi. And I wonder whether when they got there, those gifts that they presented actually felt at all adequate to express their joy. The hymn that we sung uh, just now expressed something of the doubt that we can feel about whether our gifts are enough. Are they good enough? But the gifts these magi, these wise men brought, are not payment for entry into the house to see Jesus. They're an expression of thanks for the greater gift that they have received in meeting Jesus. And so it is with us. The gifts we bring are an expression of thanks for what we've received. It's not a payment to earn something or get something. And the most important gift that we can bring, as the carol in the bleak midwinter says, is ourselves, our heart. Just think, the Magi, astrologers, they were astrologers, they were sorcerers. They are about as far from respectable Judaism as you could get. 
and um, and they see the stars and planets speaking of their maker and they have to know more and they have to travel they can't help themselves almost they have to go and find out what all this means and meanwhile the scribes in Bethlehem are sitting on the sacred prophecies that tell them all about the Messiah who was to be born in Bethlehem just a few short miles away from where they were and they do nothing about it even when these strange foreign visitors arrive and alert them to the fact that he's here they've come to find him all Herod can do is plot for ways to get rid of him those scribes with their books held all of the answers but faith isn't about knowing the answers faith is about the seeking and the following faith is about giving yourself and continuing to be attentive to what God's showing you along the way. And what this whole story suggests to me is that God will welcome you with open arms, when at whatever it is that brings you to him. And this was something that the early church needed to discover, not least Paul, who started out hating and persecuting the first Christians, because he thought that was God's plan. And it's a really interesting story to hear how his life was changed. You can read it in the Acts of the Apostles. But Paul, having met the risen Christ for himself, had been completely turned around by that encounter with Jesus. And he came to understand that Jesus was not only for the Jews, but for all the world. And that's what he's writing about in this letter to the church in Ephesus. That actually this might have looked to Jewish people like a complete change of plan. But in fact, it was God's intention all along to include the Gentiles as well within God's blessing, to make them part of Christ's body. So that as Paul writes in that passage we heard, everyone might go into God's presence with all confidence. And having encountered Jesus, we can't remain unchanged. In some ways, in this whole story of the Magi, what speaks to me most today is that they returned to their country by another road. All, the, all through their journey, they had to keep on adjusting based on what they saw and what they understood of the signs in the world around them. Having seen the star and come to Jerusalem, they had to listen to the prophecies that redirected them to Bethlehem, <laughs> not where you would expect to find a new king born. When they saw the star again, it confirmed that they were on the right track. But they needed to know that they couldn't travel back the way they'd come. And so they were warned in a dream. They couldn't travel back the way they had come. And how true that is for us today. We are in some senses in a foreign country at the moment. And perhaps we are also longing to return home. But we can't travel back the way we came. We're living on a new map. And it's not entirely clear what that might mean for us. I think we only ever really know the route one step at a time, even if we have some idea of the destination. And even if we do know the route one step at a time, even then sometimes we're not sure, even in the taking of each step, that that's the right step. We do have to keep on being attentive all the time to what God is saying and to what we see around us. But what is clear is that God welcomes everyone. And surely part of our journey is to be ready to seek and to welcome and to include all comers, whatever direction they or we might come from. It's no good being like the scribes who were effectively saying perhaps the same thing as my friend's grandson did. Thank you for the book. I haven't read it. No, we need to receive the gift of that um, encounter with Christ and let that encounter change us and keep on changing us. We need to be willing to change direction, not just once, but over and over again. 
And in a sense, perhaps that's all faith ever is, seeking and following, one step at a time. Amen. We're going to sing again now. We're going to sing Lord for the Years. It's number 470 in Singing the Faith. Lord for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way. So we bring our prayers for the world and there's a response when I say Jesus child of Bethlehem I invite you to join in with the words may all the world find hope in you Jesus child of Bethlehem may, may all, all the, the world, world find, find hope, hope in, in you. you and so we pray Lord of all our journeys 
We pray today for those searching for warmth and safety, for those fleeing persecution and violence, for those in temporary accommodation because their homes have been flooded or damaged. And we remember particularly those affected by Storm Bella and by the earthquake in Croatia. Jesus, child of Bethlehem, may all the world find hope in you. Lord of all our ups and downs, we pray for those searching for peace of mind, for people struggling with depression, eating disorders, addictions, and for their families. We pray for those facing the new year with sadness of heart or little sense of purpose. And for those who face it alone. Jesus, child of Bethlehem, may, may all the world find hope in you. Lord of all wisdom, we pray for those searching for clarity and stability. We pray for businesses adapting to new trade arrangements, for farmers and fishermen, for teachers and students amid uncertain term times and new ways of learning. We pray for those in industries unsure when they can reopen and struggling with new regulations. We pray for scientists challenged by new variants of the COVID-19 virus. And we pray for those desperate to see their families again. Jesus, child of Bethlehem, may all the world find hope in you. Lord of love, we pray for those searching for work and for those whose work is exhausting. We remember especially those in the NHS and the emergency services for carers and for those administering the new vaccines and for all who will receive it. We pray for those searching for ways to feed their families and pay their bills and for those charities and organisations trying to help and support them. Jesus, child of Bethlehem, may all the world find hope in you. Lord of all, we pray for those searching for faith amid anxiety and loss. We pray for your church as she seeks to reach out to those who are isolated or grieving or battling with big questions. And we pray for one another as we seek for ways to offer our time and our resources to our communities and those most in need. Jesus, child of Bethlehem, may, may all, all the world, world find hope in you. In you. And we gather these and all our prayers in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is perhaps not the most obvious one to choose on the second Sunday of Christmas because it's usually um, used as an Advent hymn and it probably is an Advent hymn really but I hope you forgive me for choosing it today when we think about the uh, the Magi, the wise men and all that it, it says to us about people um, all from all nations, from all places, all corners of the world being drawn to Jesus. And uh, this hymn expresses that sense of coming from the north and the east and the south and the west. It says, your seers have longed to know their Lord. And it um, finishes by saying about how all of us are called to journey on. So it felt appropriate. We sing number 172, Hills of the North, Rejoice. So may we go into this coming week and this new year knowing that God goes with us on our journey. Let's share the words of the grace together. May, may the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Across the desert, travelling over sandy plains, comes a company of wise men moving steadily along their way, leaving all their friends behind them, guided by the stars so bright. Now they've got to keep on going, must not 
let the sun get out of sight. Riding through the desert, gently the wise men draw. On was to the king who was promised long ago. But the emperor had yet to find him. There's many towns to search. So they'll keep on following the star. Place of birth. Wise men of the desert journey travel many miles so far. Though they're getting tired and weary, tell the healthy hand is not too far. How they long to worship Jesus. On him the royal gifts Hearts are full of joy and wonder As they're searching for the newborn king Riding through the desert Gently the wise men grow Born was to the king Who was promised long ago Keep on following the soul, for it will lead to his place of birth.